Hi there, I'm Ranjan Bharacharya. Today I'm joined by Thor Portis, who is one of the co-founders of Crowd With Us, and Thomas Knutz, who is a prolific developer who's raised uh, close to a million pound uh, through using crowdfunding. And that's what we're going to talk about today, a little bit about crowdfunding. So let's start with um, you, Thor. I mean, you're an investor and developer yourself. Yeah. Um, so what problem did you um, look to solve when you set up um, Crowd with us? us? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Ranjan. So we originally set up the company to crowdfund our own property deals. So I've worked with Thomas in the past. We actually started off together, funny mm -hmm. enough. So we both you know, would stick money into deals, um, or if one of us didn't have cash, the other would stick money in, um, or we'd go out to outside investors. So the idea for setting up Crowd with us was to utilize technology to facilitate that process to scale up. Okay, yeah. so is this to um, replace the need for banks? Uh, not necessarily. So I, I think there's a place for the banks mm -hmm. in property development because it, it's generally the cheapest source of finance that's out there for experienced developers. But I, I think uh, crowdfunding can complement that. And where the banking world is a bit slow and you know um, not facilitating deals as quickly as developers might want to, then crowdfunding can play a place there. So which bits are the banks funding? Because typically the banks will fund uh, you know 50 or 60 percent. There's a chunk that the investor has to put in, and there's obviously money to develop the properties as well and do the building works. Yes. Uh, which bit can you, or uh, which bits can you use crowdfunding for? Yeah. So the reason most people use uh, crowdfunding, most developers, and in fact, you know, most developers before they start using crowdfunding, they have probably been out there working with private investors themselves. So the, as you say, the banks will stick in, you know, sixty to seventy percent, sometimes eighty percent of the total costs and then the crowdfunding is used for the remaining equity that the developer doesn't have. So that's like the top 20 or 30 percent of cash. Required. So are the developers putting in any money themselves? In our platform, yes. We, we want skin in the game. Is that a prerequisite for you? That it, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's not a free-for-all. Um, you know, if, if, some, if a developer doesn't have liquid cash, then we'd look for some skin in the game via a personal guarantee. So we'd need some yes. assets somewhere else where, you know, if something goes wrong, the investors know that the developer has some skin in the game. Now, traditionally, of course, um, we've all used private investors for our various projects in the yes. past. And that's, that's relationship building, it's coffees, it's getting to know people, it's getting people to trust you, it's eyeball to eyeball stuff. Yeah. Um, you can't do that over the internet. So what due diligence is done? How do we... Um, know that the same due diligence is being done as you would do if you met the developer eyeball to eyeball? Yeah, that's a good question. So where we're really focusing is on the risk mitigation because if you can look after the downside, the upside should look after itself. Mm -hmm. So we'll promote to the investors that all of the due diligence that we've done and how their funds are going to be secured. So as you say, we're all developers, and we, you know, you've been, you still are investors mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. other people's deals, um, similar to us. So we, we look at it from the developer's perspective, but also from the in investor's perspective. You know, and it's quite transparent. All of the security documents are there. You know how the money's secured, um, and the analysis of the deals. Okay. Which is so that's out. listed uh, basically on the platform yes, uh, is, for yeah. people to see. Now, is um, what are the different ways um, an investor can participate in a deal? Because it's not just um, uh, a straightforward loan. Uh, you can participate in an equity basis. Yes. Can you just talk us through the different ways an investor can participate? in someone's deal on, a crowd, on your crowdfunding platform? Yeah, so there's two real ways, as you've touched on. So one is either lending on mm -hmm. a loan basis where the investors get a, a fixed return on their money that's invested. Um, and the other is typically, you know, a share in the profit. So that there's no guarantee of any profit in that respect. Um, if the profits go down, then the investors, uh, you know, profit would go down. But if it goes uh, better than anticipated, then they benefit from that. So that they're the two ways. And then when we look at debt funding, we um, facilitate loan notes, which is where the funds are raised where the project is known and it's secured. Um, and then the other way that we're helping some developers out is where we raise funds in advance of the projects being secured, and that's through a mini bond. Yes, yes. And that's debt finance again, like a loan. 
Now, this is all getting very innovative for people because in the old days it was just private investors and straightforward uh, banks and stuff. Now, when you've got these multiple different ways of raising finance on one particular project, of course, um, of course you've got to look at, it, look at the project being a success and uh, what, what, what the return is if it's a success. But you've also got to look at what could happen if it all goes Pete Tong. Yes. And there's a certain pecking order of who gets their money back first That's in right. uh, yes. if, if it does go Pete Tong. Can you just talk us through that so that people understand where a crowdfunding investment would actually fit in in that pecking order? Yeah, so the, I mean, the crowdfunders <coughs> and investors can come in in the same position as banks would normally do. Mm -hmm. So if a developer is raising finance from investors for 100% of the costs, then the investors can participate in the senior debt. And if they are, which is the first charge, you mm -hmm. know, the mortgage, 70% mm -hmm. typically. They're the first in the queue. So they would be the first in the queue yes. if they'd invested in that tranche. Yes. However, if the bank is the financier who's put that 70% in, then they're first in the, the uh, pecking order. Mm -hmm. And then typically the investors who've stuck in the equity through either like a mini bond or a, a loan note mm -hmm. or as equity, you know, by shares, um, they would be second in line, and then the developer's um, contribution would be generally the last in line right. to get money out if something you know didn't go to plan. So, and of course, depending on where you are in the pecking order, if you are not first in the queue, then presumably it's slightly more risk and there should be slightly more return. Yes. Is that roughly the way it works out? Is that a fair rule of thumb? That should be how it works. So generally the banks will take a lesser return, you know, and that could range anywhere between 4% to 8% to 12%. If investors are coming in after that and sticking in the equity or the mezzanine finance, then that you would expect that they should be hopefully able to get a higher yes. return because they're obviously taking more risk. Now I've got to ask this question. I mean, crowdfunding is relatively new. It uh, hasn't been around for really more than five years or so. Yes. Uh, there's there are quite a number of platforms that have uh, hit the market for crowdfunding in general, yeah. and quite a few specialist property ones as well. So um, you know it's all settling down a bit. But why is Crowd with us different? What's the what's the USP? Yeah. So we 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 like to um, <coughs> differentiate ourselves where uh, whereby we're, we're basically positioning ourselves as experienced property developers. Who are running a finance, you know, fintech platform. Uh -huh, so we're uh -huh. looking at it from the investor's perspective first and foremost. You know, we want to make sure that where possible, um, you know, that the investors get all of their money back plus their returns every time. Um, and then on the flip side, we want to facilitate developers to raise cash a lot easier than, you know, their current means of doing so. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, Thomas, you are uh, I've known you for many years now. You've, you've come a real long way. You're doing student housing schemes of more than 100 units in one building, lots of schemes in parallel. Uh, I know you've raised more than £12 million from private investors and recently uh, close to a million pounds just in crowdfunding. And finance is really the fuel that's driven your sort of growth. Um, but the traditional private investor method has worked well for you. You raised close to close to twelve million pound on that. So, 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 what, so why change? Why, why uh, go for crowdfunding? What, what, what's that giving you? Well, as you say, it's a long process dealing with private investors. I mean, these private investors are hard work for the last ten years. They've got to know me over ten years. So, whenever we want to raise more funds. We have our current investors already invested, so we do need to expand a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, with crowdfunding, we've never really understood it until recently. I've always thought, okay, I couldn't really understand it, because it can be a little bit confusing sometimes, you know. So we eventually decided, let's put our head down and try to understand it. And um, so we tested the waters with it, and it hasn't been as painful at all as we thought it would be. It was quite simple and straightforward. Even with the paperwork, it's just a lot easier and smoother, and so we're definitely going to give it a good try. So the forward. paperwork you touched on, the compliance stuff, the, the, the onus on that is shifted to the platform, presumably, rather than the, uh, the developer. Yes, and they've got all the stock paperwork in good place. It's all been checked by FCA anyway mm -hmm. and checked. And all you have to do is just, when you first start with the crowd with us, you just sit down, you have to transfer all the information, the appraisals and all that. And we did it in one hour. 
and they've got all the information they need and they push it through and get all the documents ready for you and all you have to do is sit and sign the documents. The appraisal's all been checked and the investors have all the information from the cloud with us people. And of course you've got third party RICS valuations and everything to run. That's all part of the appraisal documents that you are um, uh, giving crowd with us in the first place. Yes, because when we have our project, we've got all our ducks in a row anyway yes, on the Dropbox, yes. so we just ship it across. Whatever they want us to give them, we just give it quickly to them. It just takes one hour really just to give them the appraisal, the valuation, all the surveys, and then they just take it from there. So has it been a case of taking the tried and tested individual relationships that you've built over 10 years and getting those people to transact over the crowd or have you actually managed to get a significant uh, base of new investors coming to you who perhaps would be investing smaller chunks which you wouldn't really want to deal with as individual investors? That's correct, yes, because we've got new investors now who have now come across through the platform, who are now on their platform. They are now involved in our projects mm -hmm. and they would come on board without me having to really spend time doing one-to-one -one meetings because we don't really have time for one-to-one -one meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's saving us a lot of time. Because so you're busy delivering. You've got how many projects on the go? We've got about 20 projects 20 on the go. So <laughs> that's quite, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we're quite busy just focusing on delivery. Don't want to be spending time with investor relations. Mm -hmm. So it's saving us a lot of time. So just talk us through a, 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 one of the projects that you've used crowdfunding for, and just talk us through how the uh, financing of that project um, has been achieved from the various different sources and how crowdfunding fitted into that deal and how long it took to raise. Well, we started the project off ourselves. We went and bought the project and started working on it mm -hmm. and got planning and so on. So we decided because we so owned it, the, the uh, asset, yes. so we owned it already and we had bank finance on it. Yes. So we decided to raise so some more money. the value of the asset? Uh, the value of the asset was 3.1 mm -hmm. and the bank was 1.6. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go and raise another 650,000 mm -hmm. on top of that mm -hmm. because we needed to prepare the commercial area, which is a big area. So um, did you do that raise after you secured planning on it? Um, it was actually before planning, because um, we just needed to get the commercial area ready. So okay. we needed some money to prepare the commercial area to get the commercial tenants in. Oh, I see, right. So right, it's an right. additional raise, Yes. because yes. some of these big projects you need money in pieces. Yes, yes. So we thought, well, let's try it with crowdfunding, because it's a live deal and we already own the asset. It would just make it much easier for everyone just to come across. Yes. Yes, yes. So yes. we decided because it's one of our first really few ones, we only really started six, seven months ago mm -hmm. really doing this. Um, let's just give it a four month window, we gave it just to play it safe. And mm -hmm. so we had, you know, 350 already within in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And the next 350 is about to close now in the next week or so. So mm -hmm. we come in well be within the four months, which suited us because we only really needed the money now. Okay. So we gave ourselves enough time just to make sure everyone, you know, Gets you so the process. you already bought the asset. Um, you already had bank financing on it. So basically, you're exiting out some of your capital tied up in the project, presumably to release and go on to the next one. No. Is that the thing here? No. In this case, no. Mm -hmm. We just needed to spend more money on the building. Oh, I see. Right. right so right. we we weren't taking our money out. Mm -hmm. Our money stays in there, but we just needed to spend more money on the building. And then so that's, that's used for I, in lieu of getting sort of development finance, is it? Uh, development finance we're going to worry about later on. Okay. But this was just to get, because commercial we can get commercial debt. tenants yes, in there, which yes. is bringing income, it's worth spending the money for. Yes, yes. So crowdfunding for you is just another tool in your financial armory in terms of how you make a project happen. Yes. Do you see yourself using it a lot more? I would like to use it a lot more. I mean, even you know, for, for, for buying, for, to replace the banks. I'm quite happy to replace the bank with crowdfunding. What do you see as the advantages? Because in, in some, some people might say, well, if you've got a great relationship with the bank, you've got one person you're dealing with, the relationship manager, they're giving you 60% or so, the rate's not bad. Uh, what, what, why, why, what's the advantage for you? Well, every time we work with the banks, yeah. It takes four months to get it across the line yeah. and a lot of admin work, a lot of admin yeah, work, yeah, so yeah. it's a headache. Yeah. With crowdfunding, I can really do it in an hour. Yeah. So 
I can do it in an hour, sit with them for one hour, give them the paperwork, they go away and do all the paperwork, I don't have to worry about it. And it can be done in two weeks. Sounds Big uh, advantage. absolutely great. Well, um, we're going to be hearing from these guys uh, tonight at Baker Street Property Meet. There are plenty more videos uh, like this on our YouTube channel. Um, the best way to experience Baker Street is to come to one of our live events. You can find out more at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. We meet on the last Wednesday of every month. Um, if you're a bank and you're watching this, watch out because crowdfunding is here and it's the, uh, it's the future. And I know uh, that any developer worth it, his salt or her salt is out there exploring how to um, master this new and innovative way of securing finance for your property projects. That's all for me. Thanks very much, Thor Thank and uh, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, see you guys soon.